Looking at London, program four, the Lord Mayor. Production number eight nine stroke LAL stroke four take one. Ten seconds. Five, four, three. The incredible story told in pantomime of Dick Whittington. Dick was an orphan boy who left his home in the country and walked all the way to London to seek his fortune. For there, so he'd been told, the streets were paved with gold. But the only work he could find was as a scullery boy in the house of a wealthy merchant. He scoured the pots and did the dirty jobs in the kitchen. The other servants bullied him, especially the cook who scolded him unmercifully. Only the master's daughter, Alice, was kind to him. And at last, he could bear it no longer and decided to run away. When all was dark, he crept out of the merchant's house, followed by his friend, the kitchen cat. By morning, he had reached Highgate Hill, a few miles out from the city. He was so tired that he stopped to rest. And when he was almost asleep, a strange thing happened. He thought he heard, from far away, the bells of Bow Church faintly ringing, and they seemed to say, Turn again, Whittington, Lord Mayor of London. Who, me? Lord Mayor? That's impossible, he thought. The Lord Mayor is the most important man in the whole city. But still, he decided to go back to his master's house and try his luck once more. And soon his chance came to go on a ship his master, the merchant, was sending to foreign lands. Dick took his friend, the kitchen cat, with him. After they'd been at sea a few days, the wind began to blow up, and the clouds got darker and lower and lower, and the waves got bigger and bigger, until there was a terrible storm off the Barbary coast, and the ship was wrecked, and the most of the crew were drowned. But Dick and his cat managed to scramble ashore. How glad the people were to see them. Yes, a great plague of rats and not a cat in the land. Dick's pet soon chased them away. And the grateful emperor of the land gave Dick gold and jewels and other costly gifts to bring home to London. So Dick returned and married his master's daughter, Alice, and in time became a great merchant of the city, and eventually Lord Mayor of London. What's so interesting about that story is that there really was a Richard Whittington. He did ma marry his master's daughter, Alice, and eventually, he was made Lord Mayor of London, but not quite as we saw in the pantomime. Here's a portrait of him, which was engraved some time after his death. 
He's wearing his Lord Mayor's chain of office, and his hand rests on a very odd-looking small cat. People don't know for sure why this should be, but it certainly helped to link him with the old story of a boy and a cat which helped him to win a fortune. Have a look at his gown. It was probably like those worn by these two men. This was a uniform, or livery, which only the most important members of a guild or a company were allowed to wear. You see, Dick Whittington was never really a poor boy at all. When he was quite young, he was apprenticed to a mercer, which is a merchant who sells special cloths like velvet and silks. And he soon became very successful himself, so much so, in fact, that he sold silk to the Queen and even lent money to the King. He became Lord Mayor of London and was re-elected three more times. He never had any children, so when he died, he left his money to rebuilding the city for schools and for homes or almshouses for poor people. Here's a paper that's signed and sealed by him. His seal is the one in the middle. and some spoons left by him to his almshouses. So you see, because of all these reasons, he became very famous after his death. And the story grew up about him afterwards, the story that we often see in pantomimes. Do you remember from our last program that in Dick's time, London was a small city protected by its high walls and gateways. This part is still called the city, but London has grown to include parts, or boroughs as we call them, each with its own mayor and council. There's the city. Do you know whereabouts in Greater London your borough is? And what's left of the city to remind us of Whittington's days? Names to remind us of the gates. Ludgate. Bullgate. Bishopsgate. The Guild Hall, where the mayor, aldermen and the councillors meet. Coats of arms of important guilds and companies, like this one, of the mercers or merchants. This one's the brewers, there are the barrels. And this one's the goldsmiths, there are the lions that we can still see on ha hallmarks today. Here's the city arms with the sword of its patron saint, Saint Paul. Can you see it in the top left hand quarter? Names of the old parts or wards of the city. Narrow alleys where merchants lived. This one's named after the Masons. Alleys where craftsmen displayed their goods and hung out their signs. But nowadays, the city is even busier. As we saw last time, people hurrying over London Bridge each weekday morning to work in the city. In the offices and banks, and important buildings which have grown out of the tiny shops. And some of the streets have been widened to take all the traffic lorries, the cars and buses hurrying by. Here, near the Bank of England. The Royal Exchange. The Mansion House, 
Where the Lord Mayor lives for the year, he's in office. This year's Lord Mayor, and this is very exciting for us in the studio, has been kind enough to lend us his state robes and has sent them here. Brian's wearing them, so he's going to explain about them to us. Well, when I was young, I can remember going to see the pantomime of Dick Whittington and thinking what a lucky boy Dick was. But I little thought then that the opportunity might come then. One day, even if it's only for a few moments, I might be lucky enough to wear the real robes of the Lord Mayor of London. And here I've got them all on, as you can see. And underneath this magnificent robe, I'm wearing a, 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 a suit called an Old Bailey. And I only wish all of you could be here with me this afternoon so that you could see the colour and the magnificence of it all. And this suit, called the Old Bailey, you can recognise, first of all, by the shoes which I'm wearing, which have a diamante buckle on them. And then above the shoes, I'm wearing black stockings, and then black knee breeches, and about that a waistcoat and a jacket. And at the neck here, you can see I'm wearing a lace jabbo, and I've also got lace on the cuffs of the sleeves of the suit. And as you can notice, I'm carrying white gloves. And on the top, I'm wearing this black treacorn hat. Rather magnificent plume on it there. And over all this, I wear the magnificent state robe of the Lord Mayor of London. Here it is in all its glory, and it's black with all its gold trimmings. And down there you can see the great train of the Lord Mayor's state robe, again laced in gold. Now, of course, it's only the Lord Mayor of London who wears such a magnificent state robe as this. But all mayors of all boroughs wear a robe of sorts, just as they wear a chain of office. The chain I'm wearing is here made of gold, and it's made up of these little pieces, the S's, and then there are knots, and this Tudor rose, which is made of white enamel on red with little bits of green. And this whole chain is linked together at the centre here with a portcullis, shaped like the door of a castle. And beneath this is the jewel of the city, the city jewel this magnificent piece, which sparkles in the light, and sometimes the Lord Mayor wears this on a ribbon when he wears it with a morning coat. But on the very important occasions, the Lord Mayor is accompanied by other officers, and they also have their own peculiar dress. On the left, with fur hat, is the sword bearer. In the centre, the city marshal, who rides or walks before the Lord Mayor. And on the right, the sergeant at arms who carries the mace before the Lord Mayor. Here at the Guild Hall, the Mayor's holding a court or meeting. The Mayor's in the centre at the back with his alderman on either side. Do you see the fur hat, sword, and mace on the table? The alderman will later discuss city business. It might be about the bridges, Tower Bridge, or the new London Bridge, or about new buildings and roads, or new schools. I expect you noticed in that film the Lord Mayor wasn't wearing his state robe. As a matter of fact, he only does that on really very, very special occasions. But he has a great variety of swords, says the Lord Mayor. And the one that is used most often, I have with me here this, uh, in the studio. And as you can see, it has a golden hilt and a beautiful velvet, deep purple shade, scabbard, decorated with these gold bands and medallions, some of them with enamel on them. And of course, a real blade. The Lord Mayor also has this beautiful scepter. This is handed to him when he takes his office and as you can see is made of crystal glass and gold bands with pearls going round and right at the top some beautiful jewels. As I say, 
This is handed to the new Lord Mayor by the old when he takes up his duties. And as the old Lord Mayor leaves his seat, the new is presented with the city's purse, which symbolises the wealth of the city. But even then, the Lord Mayor can't begin his work of looking after the city and its people until he's shown himself to those people of London and to the judges of the land. And he does this by going in procession. Riding on horseback, like this, as he did in the early days. Or as later, in a handsome golden coach with horses. A hundred years ago, his procession looked like this. Led by the Union Jack, horses prancing, banners flying, and the sound of the band playing. There goes the city marshal on his white horse, and the master of a company in his coach. There go the soldiers, and here are some men dressed as knights and as squires, as part of the pageant. Now the sheriffs, in their coaches, followed by the horse guards. The retiring Lord Mayor, who's just finished his year of office, followed by the new Lord Mayor in the grand coach. And there's his guard of honor. Now we'll see him at the start of a recent Lord Mayor show. Mounted police are ready. The mayor gets into his coach. You notice the armor those men are wearing? It's like the armor we saw a little while ago, isn't it? Can you remember the name of those soldiers? Yes, pikemen. They used to borrow their armor from the tower. Walking by the side of the coach is the sergeant at arms. There he is beside the pikeman. The mayor arrives at the law courts. be welcomed by the judges there. Even if you're not lucky enough to see the Lord Mayor show this year, you can still visit the Guildhall and explore the city. There's plenty to be seen here and in your own borough too. For instance, do you know where your mayor and his councillors hold their meetings? Do you know what his chain of office is like? Could you draw the coat of arms of your bearer? We'll see what you can do. Bye. <laughs>